everyone, welcome back to Second Look. We're not reviewing a game today, I'm actually talking about a magazine that one of my friends was kind enough to donate to me and I thought it might be interesting to just kind of look through it. It's a Sierra News magazine from fall of 1990 and it's really nostalgic. I, I can't even believe I'm looking at it. It's in mid condition, so shout out to Jesse Frola. Thank you so much for this magazine. It's really awesome. Just so cool to look at. This is volume three, number three, as you can see here. Um, and this is the Christmas edition, I suppose. All these little kids are holding Sierra games. This one has King's Quest V. This one has Jones in the Fast Lane. I'm not, she looks like she's about to eat it. So yeah, this is a really, really cool magazine. I'm not gonna talk about everything for time's sake. I'm not gonna talk about everything in the magazine, but I'm gonna talk about things that strike me. I haven't looked through this magazine in a while, so there might be squeeing at certain points. I'll try to keep it down and we'll try to restrict the time. But if you do wanna look at this magazine, they are all listed and there will be a link below the video and you can see the magazine yourself or you can follow along if you want or if you wanna see things that I didn't touch on, you can. And like I said, that will be in the description below. Volume three, number three, Sierra Magazine. Actually, let's take a look at the back really quickly because um, I think these are really interesting pictures. This, this was when King's Quest V was, I believe, it was either out or in production. And this is kind of the box art for King's Quest V here. And what's interesting about this is this right here, I don't know if you can see that, but below the picture, it says actual VGA screen. And there's been some debate. We're not sure if this is actually the VGA screen. It looks really high resolution. I think it's just a painting, but I'm not sure. I, I did look up the actual screen and I'm not sure. It didn't look like this, but of course they did digitize paintings for background. So maybe this is just the painting of the background. I don't know. What is King Graham standing on? Nothing. Who knows? It's cool. It's cheesy. But yeah, so that's what this magazine looks like. And there's actually hint lines down here, which I'm sure are not there anymore, but I used to call them all the time and rack up like hundreds of dollars and my parents would yell at me. It's not my fault that King's Quest VII was a bitch, okay? Look at that, look at that. Ken Williams, president of Sierra Online, co-founder. And this article, if you wanna read it on your own time, it's actually a very outdated techie article. It's really kind of funny. It talks about CD-ROMs because they were coming out and why you should own a CD-ROM and stuff like that. And talks about low density and high density uh, discs. And it's, it's very interesting. Here's an interesting comparison shot here of King's Quest V in 16 color and King's Quest V in 256 color. Such a big difference. I'm not sure why they chose like different shots to compare, but yeah, this is simply, simply gorgeous. Um, very cool stuff to see. And here we have my favorite stuff, some of the King's Quest stuff. There's Cedric the Owl looking a little emaciated. <laughs> Should eat something, Cedric, or maybe not, because nobody likes you. Actually, this is very strange box art. I'm not sure if I would have bought this game at the time, just because the box art is so bizarre. Who are these kids? I don't care about these kids at all. VGA version, very, very pretty, especially the Yeti cave. And if you haven't played King's Quest V, you definitely should. If these screenshots, these lovely screenshots are not, you know, not convincing you, just forget there's an owl named Cedric in there. It doesn't matter. It's all good. Uh, in Space Quest, oh yes, what was coming out in 19, in 1990, fall of 1990? Looks like they're talking about Space Quest 4, Roger Wilco and the Time Rippers, which is a very notable Space Quest game because they got a very interesting narrator, uh, Gary Owens, and he is amazing, amazing narrator for Space Quest, was it, which was interesting because they didn't keep him around for Space Quest 5. Actually, there was no audible speech in Space Quest 5, but Space Quest 4 had a lot and beautiful, beautiful game. Very, very funny, insanely hard, <laughs> but still. Why is there no screen cap for Space Quest? I actually don't see one, that's interesting. And of course, Quest for Glory, which is a throwback to the first game I ever let's played with uh, fellow Tigwa Tigger, uh, Pa Dugan, 
aka that guy with the glasses, and I don't know, I call it Tig with Tig, because I'm cool like that. Um, so yeah, they're talking about quests for glory. Oh, these are the, oh, these are the caps for, well, why are they over here? What is that? Who, who, who's in charge of graphic design? You're fired. Wait a minute. There's a salacious lady here. Shouldn't that be in Leisure Suit Larry? Oh, well. Um, yeah, I do believe she is from Space Quest, and yeah, this is all definitely from Space Quest 4. Now, Quest for Glory, I didn't really get into. Honestly, if I had to be honest about my Quest for Glory experience, I actually played the fifth game first. I know that's like the breakaway game from the series. It seemed like the Sierra series always had that different breakaway game. King's Quest had seven and eight. Those were both kind of breakaway. And Leisure Suit Larry, seven different graphics. Well, Quest for Glory 5 was that, but that was the first one I played. So I got really hooked on it, even though it was kind of fundamentally broken. And then I played the first one later. So I've actually not played Trial by Fire yet. I actually haven't played any of the Quest for Glories in between, but they are really cool games and I do acknowledge them. Um, I really do like them. And now here's, oh, Jones in the Fast Lane. Oh man. Oh yeah, I love that game. Jones in the Fast Lane is a life sim, basically. Uh, you basically get a character, you go to work, you get broke, you lose your clothes and wear a barrel. Oh, it's great. I love it. I love Jones in the Fast Lane. It's kind of a short little game, but it's it's notable. I like it. Mixed Up Mother Goose. That was something I shouldn't as pl should not have played when I was that old. I played it, I think, when I was like 13. It's for five-year-olds. I don't know. I like fairy tales. I like Mother Goose. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with playing Child, child Beans when you're, you know, 13 and have no friends. There's nothing wrong with that. It had good graphics, okay? That's why I did it, in my defense. Stellar 7, that sounds familiar just because I think that came in my Creative Lab CD bundle. But I lost that bundle a long time ago, and they're not very easy to find. The, the Creative Lab's bundles are not easy to find. Especially with all of the CDs that came with it, but I actually had a bundle that had both King's Quest V and Doom in the same bundle. How does that work? I don't know, but it was pretty freaking cool. Uh, here they're talking about Dynamics, which became part of Sierra back in the early 90s. A uh, good example of that is The Adventures of Willy Beamish. That was Dynamics, and actually, I'm a fan of Willy Beamish, and I hope it pops up in this uh in this magazine somewhere kids and computers adventuring into the future with students of ba van buren school oh my in may of 1990 sierra staff writers uh visited martin van buren school in stockton california to witness results of a revolutionary educational program involving fourth fifth and sixth graders at the central california school what they do just give them computers i don't know what they did it looks like they're just having fun on computers, which is all good for me. I don't know who drew these pictures. Probably the kids, and I'm making fun of them, but that's okay. I mean, look at this. Yeah, they're just kind of talking about the effect on computers and schools, it looks like. And I don't know what generation people are watching this, you're watching this from, but in the early 90s, I would say in 92 and 93, we did start getting personal computers in the school environment. And I remember we had the Oregon Trail, we had Math Blaster, and we had Carmen San Diego. And I remember in fourth grade, we had an old IBM computer, and we had Carmen on floppy disks. And I believe they were the five inch floppies, I can't remember, but I was the only one who knew how to run it in DOS. So I was everybody's freaking hero. King's Quest Four up here, not one of my favorite games, but I know that a lot of my female friends actually really liked King's Quest IV when they were growing up because it did have a female lead and it had a very strong female lead. Up until King's Quest IV, they were all male leads. You had King Graham and then Alexander and then you had Rosella. Laura Bow II was the notable strong female lead for me. I didn't pay too much attention to Laura Bow I um, because they kind of made her out to be a little bit mousy. And they never did that with Rosella, but in Lorabo 2, they kind of made Lorabo a little bit more of a, a hero, heroine. Classics Reillustrated! 
How I learned to stop worrying and love SCI, King's Quest 1. Okay, so they actually remade King's Quest 1 back in the early 90s when they upgraded to the SCI engine, which is Sierra's creative interpreter, which is an engine that ran a lot of the Sierra games back in the 90s. Before that, they were using AGI, uh, Adventure Game Interpreter which was a lot of the 80s games. And they're both engines that they use and they ran their own scripting languages. Uh, SCI was object oriented, which honestly makes a little more sense because uh, adventure games are like all objects. You have different settings, you have different inventory items, you have different characters. So it made a lot of sense. And actually this, I don't know if you can see that, but this was written by Josh Mandel, who's a producer and the voice of King Graham. Very notable. And he's also the designer of one of my favorite games, Callahan's Cross Time Saloon. So shout out to you, Josh Mandel, because you are awesome, very funny, very talented voice actor and game designer. Oh, wow, what's this? That's a comic. It's not a funny comic, but very creative. Uh, very interesting little illustrations here. It's just a mom coming in to, to dust a computer. And she screams and runs out and the little boy's like, what's wrong with your mom? And the kid says, she's always been afraid of mice and holds up a mouse because I... <laughs> that was the humor back in the day, folks. That was computer, computer humor. Oh, how far we've come. Oh. Aww. It's a little, it's a poster. It's a poster promoting King's Quest V, but the oil's well guy is down there and he's like, I don't want to play that game. These magazines are really cool, kind of like highlights. They had, you know, drawings submitted in by people. This is really cool. I want to enter this contest. I wish I could. I could win some... Nothing, because I don't think you win anything. I'm going to send my drawings in to Sierra Online Box 1103 Oakhurst with the attention of cartoon contest and try to win something. This is a cool, oh wow, this is a really cool uh, crossword puzzle because it has all of the rules from from games. Oh, I think that's, that's real. oh, at least some of them are. Like the land of Rosella's adventure, that would be Tamir, so I guess that fits. I think we should all go online and try to figure out all of the answers to this. Th that would be kind of cool. Here we go, college student and amateur detective. Hmm, could that be Laura Bow? It is three letters, so it's probably Bow. That would be my guess. 23, two guys from Andromeda. Very cool. I actually, I actually want to finish this. <laughs> I, I might actually like scan it and try to finish it to get some nerd cred or something. This is a, this is an article about airplanes and I'm not really, uh, can't say I'm all that into airplanes, uh, Sierra. No oh, thanks. But you guys can read it if you're following along if you want. Here's some more cartoons uh, from the international community because actually adventure games are very, very popular uh, in Europe. They just love them. Uh, Germany, um, just all the European countries, especially Germany. It's, I have a very large demographic uh, from Germany who watch some of my adventure gaming stuff, so. And I happen to be German and Austrian, so. Motherland. Service, you want it? We've got it. You know, I don't know what this is talking about, but that's okay, because I'll read it later. Oh, that's adorable. Wait a minute, 14 years old? Dude, I think you can do a little bit better than that. What are these things on the floor? Are those acorns? Oh, this is a dragon. Oh, it's cute. That's pre that's pretty adorable. Oh, these are customer support solutions. So apparently, if you had a problem, you could write in to Sierra, and they'll maybe they will choose you, and they will answer your question. Tell me how to get out of the desert near Gaza. I keep dying. Well, that's not a question. That's actually kind of a command, and I I find that rude, and I don't think I would choose that one. I have the holy grail, but I keep dying. Why? Um, oh, these are tech support solutions, and then these are kind of game support questions. So that's kind of cool. When I try to boot my new game on my Amiga, I get the message, software error, task held. I need to reboot my system. Do I have bad disks? It says, no, you probably have a recent release of the Amiga 2000. I wonder if that was correct, and I wonder if that person read this article and actually fixed it. 
oh, this is hilarious. So somebody actually commented on the fact that Ken Williams isn't smiling in his portrait. Something in particular bothers me about your picture in Sierra Magazine. Namely, you don't smile. Why should that bother me? I can't say for certain why you're not smiling bothers me, but I won't read your article. I never have. You look angry, unhappy, and mean, as if you don't care about people. Maybe your computers are rubbing you the wrong way. I would like to see you smile in the next issue. Perhaps others would too. Just thought I'd let you know. Uh. <laughs> I will never read your article because you are not smiling, sir. You may wonder why an editor would dare consider printing this letter. Because Ken himself referred to me with a note that it could be a good letter to the editor. He has a real sense of humor and he still likes this solemn picture with his president's column. Maybe you should be a little bit more cynical, Kelly. Not Life's not happy all the time. Life isn't always fair and sometimes you look stoic. I don't think computers are rubbing us the wrong way. That would be wrong and I might have to file a lawsuit. Oh wow, oh wow. This is bringing back some super memories for me. This Logitech mouse with the three buttons here. What, did anybody ever use the third button or the very last button? I don't know. I can't really like imagine which button I use more. Why is there three? Who knows? But yeah, that is the exact mouse that I had with the little Logitech logo right there. This is actually talking about pricing for like hint books, music cards, which are insanely expensive, as you can see. Roland MT32 sound module, oh, it's on sale, was $550, is now about $400. So they're talking about music software, here's Sound Blaster, MIDI connector box bundle, um, joystick and mouse hardware. Oh, you can even get t-shirts. I, You know, I wish. Colonel's Bequest t-shirt. I can't even imagine what that would have on there, but I hope it's gruesome bloody murder. Kind of like in the game. That would please me. Quest for Glory t-shirts, Police Quest 2. I, I would like to see some of these. So if somebody can tell me uh, if you have a Sierra t-shirt or if you find somebody, you definitely send them my way. You know, leave me some clues in the comments or something because I would actually really love to have one. Uh, that just, that's really cool to me. I want, that's my goal in life now is to have a Colonel's Bequest shirt. What is cosplay? What is this? I love this. Who are these characters? <laughs> Where is like King Graham and stuff? It just looks like a princess. Come on people, try a little harder. If it were me, I would probably cosplay as Roger Wilco. I don't see any Roger Wilcos in here, but that is a nice bird. So well played, sir. That is a nice cockatoo. And yeah, that's basically it. That is basically what is in this magazine. It is great. It's just a trip to look at stuff like this and reread about games that were really popular and reread about all the tech stuff. And it seems really dated now, but it's actually super impressive at the time. I love looking through this magazine. It really excites me. And they are all listed on the Sierra Gamers website, so if you want to go look at them, you can. They are all there. I think they're all there. I know this one is for sure. I did make sure. Come into the world of King's Quest V. Very nice. Well, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, I hope to see you again in the next review, or maybe I'll get something else really neat and we'll share that. Let me know. Let me know what you think about the magazine, and let me know if you actually looked at the PDF that's online, and tell me what you thought about it. So okay guys, thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.